Hello everybody, my name is Matt. Um, I work at the Australian National University. I've been there about oh, 15 years as a programmer. Um, except I resigned last week, so... <laughs> Tomorrow's my last day of work. We'll be talking about had, uh, adding some augmented reality to your app. Um, so, just in case you haven't, you've, uh, in case you've been living under a rock that had no Pokemon under it for the last few weeks, um, we'll quickly talk about what is augmented reality. Um, we'll let, uh, we're going to look at some frameworks that I've looked at for adding augmented reality into your app, and then at the end we'll look at just doing it completely from scratch if you're absolutely insane. So please note, um, when I submitted this talk, um, Pokemon Go was not a thing. Um, so there won't be anything about Pokemon in this talk, except for slides 10, 11, 36, and 37. <laughs> so bye-bye, Pikachu. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right, so augmented reality, it's a pretty simple concept. It's basically a camera that's looking at the real world and you're overlaying something on top of that view from the camera. So you're augmenting the real world, hence augmented reality. Um, the augmentation could be anything you like, um, information, graphics, Pokemon, and that's about all there is to it. So augmented reality is different to virtual reality. Um, up until a few weeks ago when Pokemon Go came out, um, people got those confused. Now everybody knows what it is. Um, Augmenting something is to add something to it. So you're taking the reality and you're adding something to it. Um, virtual reality is completely replacing reality. It rejects your reality and substitutes its own, um, as they like to say in Mythbusters. It's basically virtual reality is a video game stuck to your face. So there have been some examples of augmented reality lately. Um, Google Glass, you could say, is augmented reality. It's sticking a little screen in front of you and it's augmenting what you're seeing. Um, augmented, uh, yeah, the Google Glass project, we don't really know how well that turned out for Google. They're not really saying, but um, maybe there'll be some more with that coming. Um, the next big one coming up is the Microsoft HoloLens. Uh, you won't see them calling it augmented reality anywhere. They call it holographic computing, <laughs> but really it's just augmented reality. It's a screen in front of your face it's adding things across that screen. It's um, augmenting your reality. So as you can see from these slides, augmented reality is only for beautiful people. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, bam, a few weeks ago, Pokemon Go suddenly became the big thing. I mean, this is a real road sign in Victoria. Seriously, people, what are you doing? <laughs> um, and just to prove the point, if you're going to play Pokemon Go, you don't want to do it while driving a car into a parked police car. <laughs> um, now, that's really loud. I'm telling you, this is how it works, man. 
So uh, everybody drink more soft drink. Um, <laughs> that was a really good example of augmented rea reality done really well. Um, and just to show that you don't have to have it on a camera, it can be on bigger devices. And as I said earlier, VR is not AR. Um, so VR, quick examples, Oculus Rift, Google Cardboard, HTC Vive. Um, and VR is not a new idea, um, regardless of what these companies might tell you. Um, if you want a good laugh, look up Dactyl Nightmare, um, that YouTube link there. Um, I played this game in the early 90s. Um, yes, I'm that old. Um, and you can see that VR hasn't really changed a lot. They stick a big thing over your eyes. You've got a little controller. Um, about the only real difference is there's now better pixel resolution, more polygons, and you don't need to uh, hook it up to a CRT screen with a gigantic computer. Um, but the concepts haven't really changed for VR. So um, I started looking at augmented reality where I was working on an app for a museum and we wanted a way for people to look at the, uh, the priceless Greek and Roman artifacts without getting their grubby fingers all over them. Um, so we thought we had 3D scans of the artifacts. Maybe we could do it as augmented reality so that the vase appears on their desk in front of them and they could look around with their device. So I had a look at um, some frameworks to do this uh, for me. First one I looked at was Wikitude SDK. Uh, it's uh, Objective C with some JavaScript and HTML as well. Supports the other platforms, which is good. Um, it does target-based image recognition, which is where it's looking for a specific image in your camera and then it sticks something over the top of that. Also does geolocation stuff, <coughs> Pokemon. Um, It'll also do QR codes, barcodes, face detection, and things like that. Uh, it has all sorts of cloudy stuff as well, so it's buzzword enabled that way too. It comes with a really good example app. Um, the documentation is pretty good, slightly out of date for the latest uh, Xcode, so you might have to fiddle around with the compiler settings a little bit. You just plug in a license code and change the bundle ID, and that's it. You can have augmented reality in your app. So here's a demo of the target tracking. It's overlaying some 2D images and some sparkles, which is fantastic, and a live web view on top of the, uh, the magazine page. It also does 3D models on top of paper, so you can see the, the 3D car pops out of the page there. And I can tap on the 3D model on my iPad and uh, interact with the, the 3D scene. It also does uh, video overlays. Hi, I'm Wolfgang, and I want to show you how you can augment the new world with digital content. Today, using transparent videos. I'm sure you have seen how Hollywood uses green screen. So they've uh, recorded some video with a green screen and then they stick that in. Um, so the code is pretty simple. Basically, we set up a view controller. And we set the license key. And we give it the bundle resource that describes the 3D or 2D uh, world that we're going to put on top of our target. Uh, that bundle has some JavaScript and HTML describing what we've got. So it's loading up um, a 3D model there and doing the scaling and translation, stuff like that. So it's all pretty simple. Um, to get the 3D models, you need to run it, f you need to have it in uh, FBX format and then run it through their converter to get it into their proprietary 3D format. But that all comes with, that, that all comes for free. Um, so, in less than an hour, I you know, started knowing nothing about how to do AR. And in less than an hour, I had a little 3D model sitting on my shelf at home with all my Lego minifigures. That's about a third of them. It's really embarrassing. <laughs> so how much does it cost? Well, it's free to trial with a big watermark across your screen. Um, don't think that people won't notice that on the App Store. Uh, it's uh, 2,000 euros per app or 5,000 euros for multiple apps. Uh, that's for 
basically one year of support. If you just pay the 2,000 euros, you don't get support after the first year. If you want support, you pay 2,000 euros every year. As I said, it's really easy to get um, started with this thing. Right, so the next one I looked at was called Kudan. Um, I really liked this one. The only thing that I don't like about it is that every time I type Kudan, it autocorrects to Sudan, and that's all I could find wrong with it. Um, <laughs> Objective-C, Android and Unity, again. It's about the same price. I'm not sure what the conversion rate is there. Anyway, 1,000 UK pounds, but that is per year. If you don't pay, then the augmented reality in your app on the App Store just stops working. Um, this one didn't have any extra prices for cloud stuff. Some of the other ones um, charge you a monthly fee to use their cloud. You can give it all sorts of different 3D models and 2D stuff. So again, the code is pretty simple. Um, we set up a license key. We tell it what we want to track and what we want to stick on top with the tracking and go. That's it. So here we can see that it's tracking the image on the paper. It's sticking their logo over the top. Or you can stick a movie over the top. You can see the waves moving there. Uh, you can stick in 3D models. And you can have video with transparency effects again. So this one, again, it's free to trial. There's no watermark. Um, but you have to use their bundle ID. So you've got no hope of loading that onto the App Store unless you pay the money and get your license key for your bundle ID. Um, the startup documentation was really good with this one. It had all the latest um, compiler flags that you need to put into Xcode. Uh, they give you all the tools on your desktop, so you don't need to use their cloud stuff, so you're not locked down there. If you stop paying, your AR disappears from your app, obviously. Um, and I had a query with this one. I couldn't quite get the example thing to compile, because I, you know, I clicked that fix issue button in Xcode, and everything went completely wrong. Um, so I thought, OK, I'll try it out. They had an email address on their website. I emailed them. Four hours later, they'd emailed me with the correct answer, so that's pretty good. Next one I looked at was called Craft R. See what they did there? Um, it's got AR in the name. Um, Objective C again, also Android Unity, Cordova. So we've got a theme here. They're all supporting those major things. Um, 2,000 euros, about the same price. This one has a 200 euro per month fee to use their cloud. And you have to use their cloud. It won't work otherwise. Um, they also have, they have two parallel products, one for AR, one for image recognition. I couldn't quite work out which one did what. They seem to have the same features, but you'll pay each for each. So you may be able to work that out better than I could. Um, example code didn't compile at all. So I, again, had to go through Xcode, work out the compiler flags to fix things up, eventually realized that it was missing the OpenSSL library, which isn't on iOS by default. Um, whoops. So I tried looking on their support site for OpenSSL, and there was nothing, no answer. Um, I clicked on the Ask the Community button, which sent me back to this thing to ask the same question again. And at that point, I gave up. Um, I'm sure that this is actually probably a really good product, and it's probably the same as the other two that we've seen, but I just couldn't get it working to start with. And at this point, I'd already found two really good ones. So you know, obviously, I didn't want to go any further. Um, Vuforia, C++ only. If C++ is your thing, then maybe you would like to look at this one. Um, I saw the C++ requirements, you know, flip the table. Um, 500 US per app, so similar price again. The, uh, the sign-up license on this one, I didn't get past that either, because it said, you give us the rights to audit your company finances to make sure that you're not trying to steal our app and blah, 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 blah. And so I didn't bother. All right, so let's have a look at a free one. Um, this is completely free. You get the, uh, the source code to the framework. It's really simple. All it does is it's one of those AR things where it, you hold up your camera, and you're looking around, and it says, oh, look, there's Melbourne. It's two kilometers away. And there's Canberra over there. It's 
500 kilometers away. Um, so if that's the kind of AR that you want in your app, then check this one out. It was um, really easy to look through their code. They actually had a, a, uh, a GitHub thing with some documentation saying, look in this file at this line. This is where you want to change such and such to, to do whatever. So that's what it looks like. It's pretty simple. But if you, if you only need simple, then check this one out. Right, final one. Um, if you want more than simple and you still want free, then check out AR Toolkit. Um, on their website, they say that they are the biggest provider of AR stuff in apps in the world. Um, has the same feature set as the paid ones. The documentation is very detailed. If you need to know how many nerves it can tessellate per hour or whatever they're talking about, I had no idea. The startup documentation was um, really, really in-depth, going in line by line of each thing, what everything's doing. That's really not what I needed to get started. And there are no uh, nice GUI tools or cloud tools to convert your content into the required um, formats. It's all command line based. But it does run on iOS, OS X, Windows, Android, um, your car, your kitchen sink, anything with a processor in it. And you can compile it for whatever. If, it do, if they don't support something, you can just compile it. They give you all the source. So let's have a look at the uh, code that you need to get started with this one. <laughs> you may remember the paid products. You uh, had may, maybe half a dozen lines. This one you do everything by yourself, and I mean everything, you know. The other one's like, here's a 3D model. Okay, we'll render that for you. This one, what's a 3D model? Ah, oh, okay, well maybe we can do some raw OpenGL code. Uh, and you can type it all in. Of course, you could use their sample app to start with if you uh, know how to do all this stuff. So um, as Spider-Man's uncle once said, with great power comes great responsibility. Um, it's a really powerful framework, but you need to do all of these things for yourself. Um, there's lots of control, lots of low-level access, but you need to write a lot of code to get this one going. Um, and there's a steep learning curve. But it is free, so if you have more time on your hands than money, then maybe you want to look at this one. Um, if, on the other hand, you have a client who just wants some AR in their app next week, then, and they're willing to pay, maybe you go with the paid product. All right, so a really exciting, colorful slide now to sum up the, uh, the ones that I've looked at. We have the four paid ones there. Pretty similar feature set. Um, they all come with example code, and you can get started really quickly. Uh, my favorite, as I said, was probably Kudan. And that stood out to me because the thing compiled pretty much straight away. There was no fiddling around in Xcode except when I pressed that <coughs> fix issue button, which didn't fix the issue. And they, they actually had a support email address, which they answered. Um, on the other hand, we have the free ones. If you want the really simple AR, then hey, go for the really simple one. And if you want the really detailed thing that does absolutely everything, then you're going to have to learn some stuff and spend some time on that. All right, has everybody finished taking the photos? Yes, good. Okay, do we have anybody in the audience who is awesome? Excellent. Do we have anybody in the audience who is awesome and modest? No, you, you put your hand up twice. <laughs> so let's have a look at what these frameworks are doing behind the scenes. Um, so what do we need to do awesomeness? Obviously, we need a view through the camera. That's kind of a duh. Um, we need to add a layer over the top of the camera, because that's what we're augmenting with. Um, and then we need the, uh, the application logic that's working out what to augment. Uh, this might be some device location, uh, device motion to work out where they're pointing the device up and down or left and right, and maybe some object detection, things like that. Um, this is going to depend on your app. So how do we add a camera view to an app? Um, it turns out it's pretty simple. Um, import the AV Foundation framework, and there's a bunch of stuff in there to set up a camera capture session. 
and you provide a, uh, a layer that does a preview of that capture. So on the uh, iOS devices, you can tell it to use the front or back camera. Give it a, uh, a view to um, show that camera in, and that's about it. How can we augment that view? Well, um, you can do it however you like, really. Um, whatever you normally use to draw in your screen, you use that. So that might be OpenGL for 3D models. Um, you might be just doing draw rec stuff for CA layer. You can even just use the um, interface builder controls, you know, labels and views and things like that. Right, so if you want to add in some uh, device location smarts to your app, um, so again, see Pokemon, for example. Um, core location is the framework that you need. There's all sorts of uh, really cool stuff in there to work out where the device is how far away it is from other things, and whether they're pointing north or south, that kind of stuff. Uh, core motion, it's working out how they're spinning the device around. Maybe that's part of your augmented reality. And then object detection is another thing you might want to do. Um, I've got two options up there for you. One is to use the core image framework, which is built in. Um, I think it was iOS 5 or iOS 6, they actually added in face detection into a core image, so that's been there for a long time. Um, so what that can do is you give it an image and it says, yep, there's a face right there. Um, I think as uh, new iOS um, releases have come out, they've added things in, so it can now detect faces and rectangles um, and that's about it, I think, um, barcodes. QR codes, they can do all that sort of stuff. The other option is a, an open source project called OpenCV. So it can also detect faces. Um, it can also recognize faces. So it won't just say, okay, there's a face there. It will say, hey, that's a face, but that's Bob's face. Um, you can also train it with training data to do whatever detection you like. Um, so if you wanted a, an augmented reality app that detects cat faces, you could do that with OpenCV. All right, um, we're going to try a demo now. So I'm going to try and work out how to plug my iPad in. Yep. Excellent. Um, so this is my example app called Devi McDev World Face. OK, there we go. Um, so we can see that I'm augmenting the real world with something else. Let's try it out here. Hey. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> um, so I have a little feature here called Tony. Let's try that. <laughs> All right, everybody got that? <laughs> All right. Um, Let's put that down. <laughs> okay, let's switch back to. Ah. Yeah, let's switch back to the slideshow. Um, so that was showing the, the AV foundation for video capture and augmenting it with some core image uh, processing to work out where faces are and then using CA layer to overlay some UI image stuff. Perfect. Um, I need to do some work on this. Um, at the moment, it only works in portrait mode. Um, if you turn it landscape, the faces kind of go opposite ends of the screen to where they should be, and they go left when you go right. It's really bizarre. Um, if you were at the talk yesterday about using the screen size stuff, all of that just doesn't work um, with core image. Um, core image has its own sort of idea of where coordinates are on the screen, which is sort of really weird compared to where the UI view stuff thinks you are on the screen. So everything's mapped in really weird ways. And then it reverses every time you switch from the front to back camera and rotate everything. So there's a whole bunch of uh, crappy code in there to try and work out where to stick those faces. Um, you also saw it was jumping around a bit. That's because the face detection takes some time. 
So that was running at 10 frames a second, whereas the video is at 30 frames a second. It also jumps in and out a little bit, so maybe you want to put in some averaging over the last five frames and do smooth animation, and that would all look really uh, a lot nicer. So um, I've made the slides and that sample app available if you wanted to download that and play with it um, and make your own augmented stuff. So do we have any questions? All right, we don't have much time. Maybe just one. Uh, don't make me OK. Yep. Um, and so when you were doing your, your AR there, that was uh, processing every video frame and then doing a face search to score yep. every point. Yep. So I presume it would be possible to say that there is a combination of image detection every key frame or something and, and try and uh, gyroscope or something on top of it. Yeah, what, yeah. What yep. So what the, um, the AV Foundation thing does, OK, the question was, do you have to do detection every frame, basically? Um, AV Foundation, so when you set up that preview thing, you tell it, uh, you give it a delegate method that says, as fast as you can, run this code. And in there, that's where you do your face detection. Um, face detection, you can have uh, high and low accuracy. I was doing low accuracy. That takes, on my device, uh, maybe, uh, yeah, I could do maybe 10 frames a second. If you do the, uh, the high accuracy, uh, that's, one detection every three seconds on my device. So that's really jerky. You don't want to do that. Um, but yeah, inside that code, you can do whatever logic you like. You can do detections every however often you like. OK. I think we're um, waiting for one, yeah, one more. Yeah, one more question if anybody has one. Yep. Um, so if you use one of the, the free servers, for example, that yep. you provided there, the ones you said was really good, how long would it have taken you to do the, the Gary example? That's a good question. How long would it have taken me to do that example using the free one? Um, probably about as long as it took me to learn how to do it all from scratch. Um, but the example with that free framework is that, um, OK, I only did face detection. The free framework, um, in the time that it took me to do that, I probably could have learned how to do target tracking and overlaying video and doing all the other things. Um, they do have example code on their site, and there are other people out on the internets who show you how to do these things. Um, but obviously, it's just not as nice as that. those paid products where you just go, oh, OK, paste in two or three lines of code, and bam, it's working straight off. All right, um, I think that's all we have time for. So thank you very much. Excellent talk. Thank you.